um, uh, hello everyone uh, good evening from pakistan and good morning and good afternoon to all those who are in different time zones uh, thank you for joining uh, me along with mr shahzad uh, for this uh, webinar series uh, brought to you by kaizen analytics llp and uh, in association with um, financial and technology services uh, this is our 11th webinar and the topic which we are covering today in details is r for finance and banking so um let me just uh, start our session with just a couple of things uh, before we start the actual content of the webinar so the first thing is all questions will be answered at the end of the session so you are uh, requested either to choose any one of the uh, method for instance you can note down your questions and we will allow, we will allow you to unmute your mic and ask the questions at the end or um, you can write the questions in the comments during the session and we will queue them and at the end of the session uh, we will answer them one by one in a, a, a bracket of 10 to 15 minutes uh, one request uh, please keep your mics mute during the session. Um, a little bit about myself and uh, my organization. Um, I'm an associate member of ICMAP Pakistan and uh, with over 17 years experience and literally work in every department, um, starting from um, uh, public finance, corporate uh, finance, internal audit, supply chain, business process, financial modeling, capacity building. So every department which is touched by finance which are the, all the departments. So I just happen to work with them. And data analytics and data visualization is just uh, part and parcel of all the games. Uh, as far as my organization is concerned, I, I'm also a, a founding member of Kaizen Analytics LLP. And we focus on two things. Uh, we focus, fo focus on capacity building. This is not just a training, but helping professionals implement the learning of training program in their professional activities and reporting. Uh, secondly, we also focus on data-driven uh, decision-making projects uh, with tools like Power BI, R, Python, uh, Tableau, uh, so that business can make informed decisions uh, using their data to stay ahead of the curve. So this was a little bit about myself and my organization. Now, uh, let me have an honor to introduce uh, Mr. Uh, Shehzad Zaman Khan. Uh, he's a member of Institute of uh, Cost and Management Accountants of Pakistan and Masters in Economics. Uh, he um, has also completed the exams of Chartered Institute of Management Accountants UK with an overall experience of more than 12 years in various sectors, uh, including before accounting firm, petroleum, and investment banking. Um, he has a passion to play uh, with data and visualization and visualize them uh, in innovative manners uh, using R and Power BI. Uh, he has also done courses uh, from Harvard edX uh, on data science, including data analytics and data visualization uh, using R and Power BI. Uh, he has also uh, a professional training in this field and conducted various sessions on corporate finance, uh, financial risk management, financial modeling at EY and UK International Institute, Kuwait. Um, as a founder of uh, financial and technology services, I would like to hand over the stage to Mr. Shahzad to take it from here. Good evening and welcome to today's webinar on application of R in finance and banking. And let me discuss first the agenda of today's session. So first of all, as Mr. Kashif introduced me, and I'm a member of ICMAP, and uh, secondly, I have completed final exams of CIMA UK. And I have done a number of certificate courses from Harvard edX platform, uh, including data analysis and visualization in Power BI and R. And also I have done financial market analysis course and certain data visualization, data wrangling, data science basics in R, and data science inference and modeling uh, courses from edX Harvard. 
and presently i am working with the subsidiary of koit petroleum corporation uh, for its mega refinery project and besides this i have worked with arnasen young koit and uh, koit finance house and a number of investment companies here in koit and i have conducted various trainings at arnasen young and uk international institute koit in corporate finance some acc courses and uh, risk management and financial modeling and i am a founder of financial and technology services now let me discuss today's agenda uh, we have to discuss first the introduction to r what are the basics of r and then installation of r and r studio which is an ide integrated development environment and comparison of r with other computing softwares such as power bi sas matlab and what are the uses and application of r in finance and banking then r operating environment then basics of r language what are the data types objects and variables in r then what are the financial packages in r then i will discuss certain financial risk models and uh, then we have a business use case for financial risk measures including var and expected shortfall so first of all what is r and what is it is all about so r is a mainly a programming language that is used for statistical purpose and a software environment for data manipulation calculation analysis and graphical display with open libraries for statistics and data science secondly it was originally created by ross yaka and robert gentleman at university of auckland and now developed by the r development core team r has a number of packages covering a wide range of topics such as finance econometrics time series and credit risk modeling these are the add on packages which are joined with the main base r and r has best tools for data visualization reporting and interactivity that is used for business and finance then where to get r you can download and install r from the website mentioned r-project.org and this is a latest release version uh, on 10th august 2021 and before the upcoming and uh, course we will definitely share with you a tutorial that how to download and install r which will help you in installation of r then why learn r there are a number of reasons of uh, learning r first of all it's an open source language it means it's freely available there are no charges then it relates to other languages like python and other sql so you can get data from other languages and connect with other languages too and it has vast community of uh, students academicians researchers who are interested in learning r so if you learn r and you will join r learning you will join a vast community of learners then it has it supports extensions as i discussed earlier that r comes with a number of packages these are the add on packages so it's extensible then it's extremely comprehensive you can do a lot of uh, you can use functions you can do time series modeling you can do risk modeling and you can do quantitative risk data financial market data you can get data from different sources import data from a number of sources even you can import data from the website directly so it's very ex extremely comprehensive then it it's an advanced statistical language mainly it's statistical as compared to python and other and it has an outstanding graphs and visualization capabilities and last it's uh, learning r is flexible and fun then installing r in r studio as i told you earlier that you need to install r first before using r studio even we you can use r console but for productivity purposes we can switch to r studio which is an integrated development environment ide and to download r and install r you have to go to the website mentioned above and select base sub directory in cran that is a comprehensive r archive network and click download and then select all the default choices in the installation process 
then R Studio has many useful features such as an editor and the ability to automatically and uh, easily write scripts and several autocomplete functions. So the main purpose of using R Studio along with R is that it makes your work easy and it has a number of functions uh, including autocomplete features and you can uh, save your script also. So later on you can retrieve and you can use that script of course. So due to these reasons, uh, we recommend you to use R Studio along with R. Then there are certain shortcuts in the R Studio, like as I told you earlier, that in order to save a script, use Control plus S on Windows and run an entire script, Control plus Shift plus Enter, or open a new script, Control plus Shift plus N in Windows. Then this is the CRAN task views uh, screenshot. It shows you. And CRAN is the comprehensive R archive network. So if you can see at the right hand side, there is a download and install uh, options. And here in the left hand side is the task views. And secondly, CRAN it, it organizes, it's a repository of uh, all the packages and it organizes uh, more than 10,000 10, plus R packages by each application. And uh, relevant tasks for financial applications are time series, risk management, econometrics, optimization, and machine learning. Comparison of R with other com computing softwares, such as Excel, Power BI, Tableau, MATLAB, etc. So if you look at that, uh, if you compare uh, on a scale of data size for business capabilities on x-axis and on y-axis learning curve rating, then you will see that R has the highest business capability because tools like Excel, Tableau, and Power BI are easier to learn. They have a steep learning curve, but have lower business capability. In the same way, Python, SAS, SAS, MATLAB have high capability, but they lack visualization and interactive application tools. But R has the best mix of uh, desirable attributes, including high data science for business capability and low cost growth and has a massive ecosystem of powerful R libraries, which are the add-on packages. Then the, uh, using an application of R in finance and banking, especially R is uh, nowadays widely used for financial packages and fi uh, financial institutions and banks are using R for different purposes. Like R is widely used in financial sector nowadays because it provides advanced statistical tools to carry out all the necessary financial functions. And R is used to facilitate the analysis of customer quality, segmentation, and customer retention and analysis. Financial institutions can perform downside risk measurement and utilize visualizations led like candlestick charts, density plots, box plots, and bar plots, etc. So R has great data visualization capabilities. And R provides tools for auto regression. AR moving average and ARMA models that are auto regressive uh, moving average models for time series analysis and risk management. And last but not the least, R is mainly used for credit risk modeling, portfolio management, and uh, analysis and risk analytics. And a credit risk model is used by a bank to estimate a credit portfolio and to calculate the probability of default. Because if you can you hear me, all of you? Yes, definitely. Please, please go okay. ahead. Okay. So, as you know, know that mostly people who are working in financial institutions and banks must know the that the banks has to calculate the total loss and especially the expected loss and, and unexpected loss. So, here it comes the VAR, that is the financial risk measure value at risk and there are certain components of uh, expected loss that's pd lgd and ead we all know that about that and we will discuss in the upcoming section in detail because this area credit risk modeling needs another uh, full uh, session so for now banks apply r to measure financial losses by calculating value at risk and expected shortfall and make use of its powerful visualization tools then what is our great at Actually, R is great at uh, data analysis, data manipulation in R. Data analysis is done by if you import data 
from any of the sources which we'll discuss later also so you have to analyze data but before data should be in the tidy format because once you get the data from any website directly from yahoo finance from bloomberg from amazon or any other uh, site uh, world bank data site so first you have to the data is in uh, wide format you have to make data in the tidy format tidy format is uh, data is that data which is ready for the data analysis so you have to first do some red data wrangling techniques and you have to make the data in tidy format you have to do data manipulation and there are a number of uh, packages and r used for data manipulation such as deployer tidy r etc and then you have to tell the story that is storytelling through data visualization packages in r such as ggplot2 plotly etc so r the base r is quite minimal and it has certain uh, plot functions and graph functions but the add on packages uh, enhances its capabilities such as ggplot2 which is the grammar of graphics which we'll see in the later slides and then r for statistical modeling and in and this way um, figure this is a garch model that is generalized autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity which you'll see later then statistical modeling in r what type of statistical models we can develop in r r is primarily used for descriptive statistics again uh, for those who, who does not have background in statistics uh, maybe in before the upcoming session upcoming course i will take uh, one or two sessions for introductory statistics then in which i will explain all the quantitative area but for now descriptive statistics which is summarizes the main features of data to calculate measures like central tendency mean median mode measures of dispersion or spread or variation that is standard deviation variance range and interquartile range and then measures of shapes of distributions that is kurtosis and skewness that if you see any uh, losses and you make a distribution so the loss distribution you have to see whether the distribution is in symmetrical shape or bell shape or whether it is skewed if it is skewed to the right it is positively skewed or if it is skewed to the left it is negatively skewed so skewness shows that and kurtosis is shows the measures of the peakedness of the graph and all this we will see in detail then r is widely used for exploratory data analysis eda that is part of the descriptive statistics which is used for mainly data visualization to find the patterns in data and to find the outliers missing data and outliers outliers definitely you must know that outliers are those observations which are uh, which having too much uh, variation from the normal observations r is used for analyzing both discrete and continuous probability distributions such as normal binomial and poisson distribution r is used for regression hypothesis and t tests to validate uh, statistical models then this is a screenshot of r studio which you will see later i will show you the uh, actual r screen and uh, it's showing the uh, for uh, installing any packages we have to give command first and this side at the left hand corner is the r studio and the right hand corner is down is the plots and packages and the right upper corner is global environment and this is our operating environment and as you can see in the left hand corner the left upper corner is the r uh, scripts and all this you can write the scripts and you can edit it and when so you press uh, control press enter you the command will go to the console down and it will run secondly this side uh, the right hand side is the global environment and down is the graph so how to install packages as i told you earlier that the base r is quite base version of r is quite minimal but you can supplement it by installing additional packages such as uh, during this uh, session and the upcoming course also we will be using uh, besides other packages we will be using mainly the financial packages that are qrm data that is the quantitative risk management for the financial stock market data and quant mode that is used for quantitative financial modeling and how to install and use a package you have to give command in the r console install dot packages and in parentheses in the double quotes package name 
and or you can do from the R Studio also. The alternative is you use uh, press the tools function, tools button, and then install packages. From there, you can select the package. Once installed, we can use our uh, package by using by loading the package by using the function library and then parenthesis package name. So here is the code. First, uh, let's say we have to download, we install and download a package called DS Labs. It's not exactly related to finance, but it's a very uh, common package and very widely used. That is Data Science Labs, and it has a number of data sets. Let's say U.S. models, populations, and uh, uh, details uh, data um, as per the states. And once you install the package, next time you don't need to install in every session. You just need to install a package once, and then each time for each session you have to load that package by using the function library DS Labs. And the, here is a list of packages in R some of the packages, uh, otherwise R has a lot of packages. Uh, so such as tidyr, probably ggplot2, that is a grammar of graphics, and uh, tidy text, ggraph, deployer, that is used for data manipulation, as I discussed earlier, and uh, caret, mass, shiny, and etc. And around more than 70 plus financial packages available in R, such as quant mode and QRM data. Then data types in R. R's basic data types are character, like in other languages also, and numeric, integer, complex, and logical. The function class in parenthesis helps us to determine the type of an object. If we um, define any object in R, it might be a variable. So anything, vector, anything are the objects. So if we want to check the object of that particular variable, let's say x, we have to give class and in parenthesis x. So it, this function will give us the uh, type or class of the object, like either character or integer or complex or logical, uh, such as true or false. Then R has various types of data structures, such as vectors, list, metrics, data frames, and factors. And a vector is a collection of elements, and it can be numeric, character or logical. We can use quotes to distinguish between a variable name and a character. And data frames, uh, you can think of data frames like a spreadsheet having, um, it's a, like a um, uh, spreadsheet having tables with rows representing observations and columns representing different variables. Same like spreadsheets. And factors are useful for storing categorical data, such as male, female, high, low, medium, and are useful for different statistical analysis. Then this is again our uh, screenshot, and it's showing the, uh, to checking the class of the data set models in the DS Labs package. And it's showing cl class models, data frame. And string models, showing the strings. And uh, head models show the first few lines of the data set models. And you can check the tail models also, the last few lines of the data set. Then you can uh, retrieve any particular column of that data set by using this command and uh, we will see in detail then uh, objects and data frames to define a variable we use the assignment operator this less than and dash sign uh, this is used for giving an assignment operator in r instead of equal sign we can use this also object is anything that is stored in named containers in r and they are variables functions etc and workspace is your current directory this is the uh, this is your workspace and you can change your workspace also. The ls function shows the object saved in your workspace. The function c parenthesis is concatenate and it is useful for creating vectors. If you have to create a vector, you will use this uh, function c in parenthesis. You will define either a character vector or a numeric vector. Another useful function for creating vectors is the sequence function, which we'll see later. A data frame is like a spreadsheet containing multiple rows and columns and used to combine vectors with the same type. So you can say a data frame is a vector of vectors. So they are used uh, for uh, data tables in R. Then this is the package uh, QRM data, and it's a very large package for financial data for students, researchers, and practitioners interested in learning quantitative risk management. And below are some of the stock index uh, data sets which we can fetch or uh, retrieve by using this package. That is Dow Jones Index, DJ Constituents Index, 
region constituents is like a, a set of 30 companies which are covered in that and that is the DEA constituent index, FTSE index and then S&P 500 index and foreign exchange rates and a long list. It's just uh, these are some of the few data sets. So uh, let me uh, share you the R also, the actual R screen, uh, which you can see. Yes, here it is. This is R. Yes, uh, I hope you, all of you can see R studio. Yes, Kashif. Uh, yes, definitely. It is clear. It is clear. Okay. So let me introduce this again. That uh, here you can see if you divide the R uh, main uh, environment in four parts, four quadrants. So you can see here in the left uh, first quadrant is uh, R main scripts and down is the R console. Here, the up, uh, upper uh, right side is the global environment in which it's showing already defined uh, objects. And then the down, that is the files, pack, uh, plots, packages, etc. So better uh, to go uh, to this uh, new file and open a new script. Here we can give any command. Let's say I have already defined some objects which are showing at the right uh, upper side, and uh, I want to clear that. So I can give the command rm, and in parenthesis, list is equal to ls, and then open, and then enter. So uh, now you can see at the upper uh, right corner in the global environment, it is empty. The environment is empty. So the all the objects already defined are removed now. So why I have removed so that the environment is fresh and you can see whatever we on the op, uh, objects I'm defining. So you can see here. So as discussed earlier, that uh, whatever package you are going to use, you have to install first. But this package, I have already installed uh, QRM data. So I don't need to install it. But if you want to install, I am giving the function install. And in parenthesis, inverted commas, QRM data. This I am on. I'm not uh, running it as I have already installed. So that's why I've used the hash. And these are used for comments. So enter. So this, if you have not installed earlier, so you have to use this command install in parenthesis inverted commas QRM data. So this it will be installed. And now, in each session, you need to load that package by using the command library. And it's autocomplete feature, so it's coming library QRM data. Now you have to press this. So the package QRM data has been installed. And now we can get the data, or we can see that what type of data sets are there in this QRM data package. So we can give the command data. Package is equal to URM data. So these are the list of packages, uh, list of data sets in the package QRM data. That is, if you can see at the left hand side, the upper side, uh, this is stock index data, foreign exchange rate data, stock index data, and uh, down is the DJ index, that is uh, Dow Jones index, Dow Jones, DJ constituents index which is comprising the 30 companies in the DJ and Dow Jones index constituent data sets, then uh, FTSE index, FTSE constituent index, and then uh, commodity data also there, gold commodity data, stock index data, et cetera, et cetera. So S&P 500 data is also there. So now I will give you some of the commands uh, just to see just just to analyze this stock market data let's say you want to see the few uh, top uh, lines of this data set uh, that is uh, dj data set first uh, we have to load that uh, data set by using the in the command data and then here yeah, to select this then inverted commas dj enter so uh, you can see at the right hand side the upper right hand side in the global environment this dj data comes if you click it it will uh, load the data 
it will view the data. Data has already been loaded, but it will view the data. So when once I click it, its command is here, view DJ. So either you can give the command view DJ or you can click on the DJ data. So the data is there. Now we can check the first few lines of this data DJ by giving the command head. DJ. These are the first few lines you can see uh, starting from uh, the date 29th, 1st, 1985 to 5th February, 1985. And this is the DJI, DJ Dow Jones Index. So now we can see some summary statistics. We can apply on that by using the function summary. Summary DJ. So now you can see it's, uh, it's it has calculated minimum value, first quartile, median, that is the second quartile, that is median, then mean, third quartile, and the maximum value. So these are some of the uh, summary statistics. And this we can uh, apply on various different way, and which uh, definitely this is uh, will be covered in one class. And uh, definitely I will cover this uh, indexing, sorting, and ordering data in the upcoming course. And it will take around a full class. So here I am just giving you an overview that how you can uh, take the data, you can uh, do the summary statistics on that, you can apply certain functions on that, you can do um, ordering, uh, sorting and indexing of that data. So just to give an overview. So let's say we have to plot this data set DJ. So we give command plot DJ. So here it is, uh, the plot is there. So then we can, you can see in the right hand side, the lower right hand side, the plot is there. Okay. Then we can give the plot uh, command in a number of ways like plot DJ comma main, main is equal to Joe Jones index. Comma color is equal to let's say red. So this now you can see in the uh, right hand side down section, Dow Jones index is the main uh, heading, and the color is red. So I will move to the PowerPoint presentation again, and I'll continue the R session also. Okay, Kashif, shall I carry on? Uh, sure, please, please go. Okay, on. I think it's clear. So let me introduce now quant mode package. It's also another financial uh, package and quant mode stands for quantitative financial modeling framework. It has three main functions to, it is used for downloading data from various uh, sources, charting or visualizations of data, technical indicators, and data is loaded via one of the available GAT symbols methods. You will see uh, what is the method and saved in the environment specified. You can uh, save in this environment, global environment, or you can specify the particular environment also to save the data. The argument source is equal to Yahoo indicates the source of the data. And we can also use sources like Google or Yahoo Finance, Fred, and uh, Federal Reserve, and uh, Bloomberg, and that local data sets, and other CSV files that are the common separated value files, and many more, uh, many others. You can also download the prices directly from the website. There is an option to download the prices from the website also if the uh, particular uh, Yahoo Finance API application programming interface is not working. You can directly uh, download the prices from the website. Then this is a screenshot of uh, the quant mode package. And if we uh, move on to the uh, real R environment, we can see that how this, uh, in order to clear the screen, I will press control L and then I will give here and even I can open a new script here, R script, and then here I can uh, load the package by giving the function library. Uh, I think yes. your screen of R studio is still, there's nothing happening. So okay. maybe you will have to share the screen I, I'll share right again. Now. I'll, yes. I'll share again. Yes. Yeah. So, is it there now? Uh, the screen is showing the uh, R Studio, but I think you are performing certain activities which were not there shown there. There's there, the Dujon index index in red is shown. 
Yeah, yeah, I will remove this, no problem. Here is uh, this one, clear all plots. And now you can see the new screen? Y yes, it is clear. Yes. Yeah, now I will remove this uh, DJ index, Dojo index as also. So we thanks. have the clear now. Now the thanks, screen thanks. is clear? Yeah. Thanks. So uh, library quad mode is that uh, you have to load the package quad mode. And this showing in the red, uh, the quad mode uh, package is installed. So now we can see in the same way, like we have, uh, we have retrieved the data from the by using the QRM data package. But in quant mode packages, this is for quantitative financial modeling. But uh, getting the, or fetching the data or uh, importing the data is uh, quite different. We have to give certain commands like get symbols. Here, I've, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, ways. Uh, but uh, definitely, I don't have time now in this session, but I will show you, give you a flavor of that. And in the upcoming uh, course, definitely we'll cover uh, all the methods or approaches. But here, I will show you a simple uh, example. Let's say uh, there are a lot of uh, data packages or data sets uh, like Apple companies data, um, Amazon data, uh, Microsoft data. So you want to uh, get, uh, you can get the data individually or you can uh, give a vector uh, by giving the command C and then parenthesis AAPL and comma Amazon AMZL and then commas MSFT for Microsoft and then you can press control enter. So this, uh, or you can say get symbols. And AAPL. So the AAPL, if you can see here in the right hand side, the upper corner, Apple, Amazon, these are the tickers for uh, using the different uh, companies data. That is AAPL for Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft. It is loaded. And now we can play around with this uh, these data sets. Let's say I want to see the Apple company's data set. I will click here. So the Apple company data set is here in the upper left side. You can see the data set. And uh, now this it's uh, the data set is showing uh, uh, th this is a type of data frame or the uh, table, which has a uh, number of columns, uh, like one, two, three, four, five, six columns. So these are the variables and num number of rows, these are the observations. So then uh, let's say column names are aapl.open, then high and like this, but I don't like this column name, so I can change it. Instead of aapl.open, I can change it to open, simply to high, low, close, volume, and adjusted. So these are the open prices of this Apple uh, stock data and high prices, low, close, and the volume and the adjusted prices. So there are a number of ways by using uh, these uh, ways or approaches, we can uh, manipulate the data. So let's say I want to change the column names. I will give the column names, uh, data sets, uh, name that is, a P L and assignment operator C very commas open comma then inverted commas high then inverted commas low. Then inverted commas close. Then inverted commas volume. And then inverted commas adjusted. So as you can see in the left upper corner, the column names are changed now. Yes, Mr. Kash, if you can see. Uh, yes, definitely, I can see. Open, high, low, close, volume adjusted. Yes. So now, in the same way, if I want to see some of the few lines of this data set, I can give the command add APL. 
I can see the fuel first few lines and then tail. There's a APL data set. The last few lines of the data set. Now I can see the particular uh, line also, and there are a uh, number of uh, different indexing options. Uh, let's say you have to give apple, then large bracket, and then one comma one. It will show us the one comma one means first row and first column. And even I can do this AAPL, then bracket, then one, any yani first row, and then comma means all columns. This. And then I can give the data set AAPL, and then large bracket, and all rows, I want all rows and first column. These are the all rows, but the first column only that is open. Now we can see the summary statistics uh, by using the function summary. Let's see, ARY summary and the data set name AAPL. So these are the summary data sets which it has applied on the overall summary or overall or data sets. But we can uh, apply the summary data set on the individual dates also, or for the only for the open prices or high or low or close prices or adjusted prices or even for the volume. But this is I, I have applied the summary statistic summary function on the overall data set that is Apple. So it has calculated for index, open, high, low, close, volume, adjusted. So these summary statistics are calculated for all independently. If you can see here in the uh, down uh, left-hand side section, and it has applied the summary statistics for in index, uh, open, high, low, close, volume, and adjusted. Then we can plot also uh, in, in the QRM, QRM data package, I have used the plot function, simple plot function. But as I told you uh, earlier in the start of the uh, session that uh, R has uh, um, great visualization capabilities uh, and uh, it has uh, certain uh, packages such as um, ggplot2, that is the grammar of graphics and it is widely famous for due to its uh, aesthetic and mapping and interactivity. So we can give uh, a lot of um, options and we can give the chart titles, text, legends, and sort of a lot of things. So here, uh, instead of using the simple plot function, so uh, later on, definitely in the upcoming course, we'll uh, discuss the ggplot in detail. But now for now, instead of using the plot function, I will use, uh, instead of plot command, I will use a chart series. There is a chart series. Uh, that is apple. And multi dot color is equal to true. And then team is equal to white. So there is a graph here at the lower right hand side that is showing the Apple data set. And uh, if I uh, I have not uh, given the command uh, theme is equal to white, so it will give you a dark screen. So that's why I have uh, given the command theme, theme is equal to white and multi dot color is equal to true. So it's a graph or plot showing the Apple data set. So we can give uh, the, um, uh, plot on a number in a number of ways like we can uh, take uh, the data set for a particular um, period from this uh, date to this date we can define an object and after defining an object we can uh, apply some of these statistics on that particular object covering the particular dates or period and then we can plot that uh, period only so it will give us or even we can uh, take uh, the three data sets, Apple, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, Intel, a lot of data sets, and we can merge these data sets. We can play around in these data sets by using the summary statistics and other functions. Even in statistical, advanced statistical uh, commands are there, which we will cover in the upcoming course, uh, which are uh, mean standard deviation, mean absolute deviation, then quartiles, 
uh, number of quantiles, and then uh, we have uh, the um, confidence intervals. We have uh, we can apply the linear regression. We can calculate the correlations. The, you know, um, we can apply the autocorrelation function, and we can see the covariances um, among the variables. We can apply the univariate uh, functions or relations. We can apply the bivariate and a lot of statistical advanced statistical applications uh, are and we can apply in these data sets then last but not the least we can use um, hypothesis and t tests anova and blah 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 so uh, i will move on to the next slide in my presentation that is this uh, i have already discussed the uh, methods of in um, at this Apple data set, how to do ordering, sorting, and indexing. I have given a, a flavor of that, and then how to rename the column names of that particular data set. Uh, Apple, if and we if we give command of class, and in parentheses is AAPL, it shows data frame. So the class of this Apple data set is the data frame. It's a data frame because it's a, in the spreadsheet form, in the tabular form, having a number of columns and number of observations that is our, that are in rows. So, now this is um, uh, just I have tried to give you a flavor of time series data. Uh, so I have incorporated some of the slides related to these. Like in the time series, uh, there are two, two types of uh, major, major types of time series. That is the stationary time series and the non-stationary time series. So what are the uh, properties or criteria for a stationary time series? The mean of the series should not be a function of the time any, uh, it should be, rather it should be constant. It means the mean should be constant, means there is no trends. So the means will be the constant in the stationary time series. So the variance of the series should also be constant. The variance between among the, let's say for the highest term, then and the I, I plus uh, one plus i term. So the variance between the two terms should be constant. And the variance of the series should be constant. This property is known as homoscedasticity. The covariance should be uh, should also be constant. And why uh, we are talking about the stationary time series? Because until unless your time series is stationary, you cannot build a time series model. In order to build a time series model, the time series should be stationary. And in case where the stationary criterion is violated or your time series is not stationary, the first requisite becomes to make it stationary and then try to build models to predict this time series. So, and then there are certain models like ARMA models. So I have not explained it in detail because those who are who have background from FRM or CFA must be familiar with these models. So I've just uh, included these to give you a flavor of that. I don't want to confuse you. So it's just uh, we can, R is, very very um, advanced in using these uh, risk management models so just to show you certain models like arma model that is auto regressive moving average model and arma models are defined for stationary time series in order to make the time series stationary you must difference the time series and later on we will see how to um, detrend the time series or how to take the differencing of the time series and how, how to apply the arma models it's quite advanced topic if you need to difference the time series d times to obtain a stationary series then you have an arma pdq model these are the parameters of the arma model and then we have garch model that is generalized autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity so don't we get confused with the heteroscedasticity. In the last slide, we have seen homoscedasticity, that is the condition of uh, constant means. The variance of the series should be constant, that is the homoscedasticity. And the opposite of that is heteroscedasticity. If the variance is not constant, that it is not homoscedasticity, it is heteroscedasticity. So this is a time series model used by analysts to predict time varying volatility. And uh, RU Garch is a very comprehensive package in R for univariate Garch modeling. In R, as I told you earlier, that R comprises a lot of packages, and uh, there are a lot of add-on packages which comes with R. So we'll see later. And then uh, today we are going to discuss a business use case that is related to financial risk measures, and that is mainly applied in banks and banks uh, how they uh, calculate their financial losses and how they calculate the expected loss. So the main uh, financial risk manager is a value at risk and another is uh, expected shortfall. So what is VAR? VAR is the maximum expected loss uh, to be expected to incur at X person's confidence level for N days. 
Let's say there is an example that 99% uh, VAR of uh, 5 million USD implies that we are 99% confident or certain that over the next 30 days, the loss will be less than 5 million. So it, it's just give a threshold that uh, this is a maximum loss and we are 99% confident that the loss will not exceed by this amount during the, this 10, 20 or 30 days. Similarly, we can say that we are 1% certain that over the next 30 days, the loss will be greater than 5. So if we are 99% confident, the confidence interval is 99% means we are 99% confident that the loss will not exceed by 5 million. So it means that uh, in another way, we can say that 1%, there is a 1% chance that the loss will exceed by uh, five, over 5 million. But uh, this is a limitation of R that it uh, does not give us the exact amount of loss that after the, uh, this uh, limit, what will be the expected loss? Maybe loss will exceed. There's a 1% chance that loss will exceed. So what will be the, that loss? Either um, 5 million, uh, 10 million, 20 million, 30 million. So uh, what does not tell us this? Then uh, expected shortfall comes. Expected shortfall is a risk measure that considers expected uh, loss beyond the VAR level. And expected shortfall is also called the conditional VAR or expected tail loss or the average VAR. Because this is a loss which comes in the extreme uh, tails, uh, this is an average loss beyond the VAR level. VAR does not describe the actual loss to be expected or to be incurred in the next uh, n number of days. For instance, if 99% VAR is USD, the 5 billion, we know that we are 1% certain that the loss will exceed 5 billion. From the VAR level, we cannot say that the loss is greater than 20 million, 50 million or so. Therefore, VAR sets a risk measure equal to a certain percentile of the loss distribution and does not consider the possible loss beyond that work level. So this, uh, now we'll go to the uh, R session, R studio. And here I will clear the screen. And here I will open a new script, R script. So let me discuss concept of VAR. As I have already discussed, what is VAR? VAR is the maximum expected loss which is to be incurred uh, and, and it is calculated at a certain uh, confidence level, let's say 95% or 99% for the next days. So like a bank calculates the maximum loss which it is going to incur or uh, the expected loss in the next n, n number of days, either 10, 20 or 30 days. So where, here we are trying to calculate a VAR at 99% confidence level. It means we are confident, uh, we are 99% confident the maximum loss uh, will incur. And uh, it means uh, there is a 1% chance that the loss will exceed than the expected value. So here uh, the parameters are there, like uh, I have assumed that expected return, that is uh, mu and it's 4%, 4, uh, 0 0.04. And the volatility that is sigma, is 3%, that is 0 0.03. So I have defined the expected return, the variable mu, that is for the average or expected return, that is 0 0.04. And the sigma, that is the uh, volatility or variation, that is 0 0.03. And here is uh, this uh, less than sign and the hyphen that is used as an assignment operator in R. Instead of equal sign, you have to give this. Because if you give equal sign, it will work also. But in the commands, we might give some equals to. So better to avoid that, use this assignment operator. And then in hashtag, I have given the comment that significance level alpha is 1%. Because if the confidence level is 99%, then alpha is equal to 100 minus 99, 1%. So uh, conf uh, significance level alpha is 1%. That is, I have defined the variable alpha uh, assignment over the 0 0.01 and confidence level definitely one minus alpha. And, and then comment to calculate 99% normal VAR, apply Q norm formula. As I have discussed, discussed earlier that uh, to calculate VAR, there are a number of options and you can uh, give up, uh, you can in, do programming, you can give, give a function and it will calculate VAR but uh, that is a long approach. So here I have applied this approach. I am using the formula uh, or the function for var that is Q norm. That I will discuss the P norm also. What is the P norm and what is Q norm and what all are these? But uh, in order to use, uh, you calculate var, we have to use Q norm function and 99% uh, uh, normal var apply Q norm formula. That is Q norm is L Q norm and in parentheses alpha comma lower dot tail is equal to true and uh, 
if you will not give this by default it is true then if you apply this function by pressing double click it will show you and here it's showing lower dot tail is true object alpha not found so it means we have to give the these again so let me give the mu then sigma zero three then alpha that is point zero one then apply q norm function q norm parenthesis then alpha So it's calculated minus 2.32 for it var. But it's, uh, you have seen here, I have not uh, given the parameters, like I have given only Q norm alpha. But if you see up here, Q norm alpha in parentheses alpha comma mu comma sigma. So if I, uh, I don't give uh, the other parameters like uh, mu and sigma, it means it is calculated var for uh, standard normal distribution. But for calculating the normal var, we have to give uh, Q norm. And then in Q norm, we have to give alpha, comma, mu, comma, sigma. And then we calculate, it's calculated minus 0 0.029790444. So this is the var at 99% confidence interval. And uh, the expected return is 4% and the uh, volatility is 0 0.03. And uh, just to tell you that if you calculate uh, Q norm, the value is this, point z uh, minus 0 0.0297. But if you calculate T norm, which is the opposite of Q norm, so you will see this, the value is 0 0.01 which is almost equal to the 10%. That is the significance level. Because it is, this, these are two functions are opposite. The P norm is used to calculate the CDF of the distribution, that is the cumulative distribution function. If you are from the field, you must know that what are the uh, probability distribution functions, what is the PDF, what is the CDF, and what are the relations between PDF, PMF, CDFs, and all these. So uh, just to show you this, uh, the Q norm and Q, uh, P norm functions, I have calculated this. And uh, if you look at the uh, right hand side, the upper right hand side, uh, the way uh, objects are there, alpha, mu, and sigma. These are in your workspace. These are the objects which uh, I have defined and which you can uh, remove also by giving the command rm and in parentheses list is equal to ls and then parentheses source by using this command you can uh, close you can uh, remove all the objects uh, defined in your workspace already. so uh, let me go to my uh, presentation and i hope uh, that the presentation uh, is helpful and it's showing the uh, last uh, in the last it's showing the useful r resources uh, actually this is uh, data science is quite big it's an ocean and i'm still learning and i have learned a lot of things not from the uh, courses only i have learned from uh, as i love uh, data science and all this uh, so i learned a lot from my own I have books, I have material, I am Googling, I am visiting websites, I am researching. And this is the only way of learning. By doing one course, uh, frankly speaking, you will not learn the whole. So if you uh, have a desire to learn, then the C is open to you. And a lot of uh, resources are there on the net and you can download the number of uh, PDF books and you can learn. So some of the resources are this RSeq, uh, this is a RC specific uh, research site, our bloggers. Uh, then uh, just, very just, famous just one thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, your R studio is visual, not the slides. Okay, let me share the slide again. Uh, yes. You now now I think it. now I think it's uh, visible. Yes, it is visible. Yes. So uh, just I'm giving you uh, giving the overview regarding the R uh, useful R resources, and then uh, Mr. Kashi, I will give you the staging to you to so discuss further. So this uh, our community site by Revolution Analytics and then Kaggle Data Science Community. And then questions. So over to Mr. Kashif and uh, uh, I'll take th Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Shahzad, for an amazing insight into the R. 
uh, that's that's amazing and rightly pointed out the the learning is is like an ocean for data science as well so there are quite a number of things if if a person has a passion so he can learn okay so uh, now i will first go for the comments so if um i'll go upward for the comments and and uh, if there are any comments so uh, with uh, if anyone has asked questions so i will uh, ask questions to our presenter and uh, he can rightly answer them and then we can move to another part where i will uh, request the participants to raise their hand and i will ask them to unmute and they can ask questions so first uh, i will go in the comment box and let's see what are the questions so there there is a question uh, let me just uh, go ahead with the questions first so first one is can we use R for manufacturing industry reports and visualization by uh, Navin? So R for manufacturing and industry reporting. Yeah, sure. R can be used in uh, banking sector, financial institutions. R can be used in manufacturing because in manufacturing also we have to uh, do um, data analysis and we have to do costing costing analysis. So as I told you earlier that R, the focus of R is not only on in statistical tools and functions, R is widely used for data visualization. It has great visualization capabilities and it, it has beaten the other softwares also. Even okay. the other softwares are very good, but uh, by using R, we can use R in um, manufacturing and we can use it for visualization. Okay, okay. So th there's uh, two of the important questions. So first is uh, from Mr. Omar Farooq. Uh, he's a CFO uh, in an in in insurance in in industry. So he has asked question, what we cannot do in R? what we cannot do yes. it's a good question uh, definitely uh, what we don't think we cannot do in our but whatever we can think we can do it okay that's good <laughs> so similar answer that's good yeah okay so next is uh i work in lottery industry most of our data is in pdf format can we mm -hmm. use r yeah sure we can use r and we can uh, take uh, like if the um, uh, file is in PDF uh, form, we can change the format and we can um, take the uh, data set in, uh, uh, we can import uh, the data set. And uh, you know, there is uh, only a single course on data wrangling, which covers, which I have done from uh, Harvard edX and which uh, covered a lot of options and a lot of uh, ways to uh, wrangle data to import data. Uh, there are a lot of options of importing data, including CSV files, PDFs, uh, text files, and Excel files, and a lot of options, a lot of uh, commands are there. So we can um, uh, retrieve, we can import any type of data in R. Okay, that's good. So there are some uh, questions which are definitely coming, but there are some questions uh, at the back as well. Let me just go over there because few of the participants were asking questions. Yes, sir, how you did, uh, you connected R with uh, Yahoo Finance to load data? This is from- Yeah, this is, this is a very good question. Actually, uh, I have shown this uh, quant mode package that is for quantitative financial modeling. And in this, I have used, uh, <laughs> I have taken the data sets uh, for companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon. And uh, I have used the uh, function get symbols but in uh, get symbols there are a lot of ways which uh, definitely uh, it is difficult to complete in today's session whole methods so i have not covered all the methods but if by using this if you give the command same the get symbols command and in the parentheses you give like i have given in the c uh, for uh, the vectors uh, apple amazon um, intel blah 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 then uh, in comma i have to give source is equal to yahoo in inverted commas and then uh, I can give a uh, closer bracket, then it will take from the yeah. If I give source, there is a uh, command, a source is equal to SRC is equal to an in inverted commas. So you have to give the source either Yahoo or uh, Bloomberg or uh, blah, blah. So it's a uh, learning has started, but how to do this is this, you have to join the course. Thank you. Okay, okay, that's good. So there are now four questions which are 
there i think let me just go ahead one by one um there's one question by miss diana so i i i hope you have answered that question but i'm just answering that one uh, can we use a rima model on clinical data so i i think you have asked answer that question yeah yes definitely we can yes so there's one question by mr abdul nasir for visualize, visualization people recommending power bi tableau etc uh, don't you think r is more for statistical analysis your valuable feedback is appreciable okay so it is it is uh, uh, more about uh, the comparison of, of various tools like power yeah. bi tableau r and um, i think the there there shouldn't be comparison between all of these because uh, all of them have some unique thing and some different thing it is all yeah. about the the usefulness but let me add one thing that uh, well said by mr kashyap but uh, as far as uh, dashboard reporting and analysis is concerned power bi is a very great tool and i like that also it has great uh, visualization and dashboard and, and these capabilities merging and a lot of things you can do but uh, as far as the statistical computing and these visualizations are concerned so r has an edge so once you will start doing this and you will um, do uh, both the packages like power bi and r then you will be in a position to compare these two exactly that where uh, r has an edge over power bi and what are the properties in which power bi is the best so uh, let me uh, <laughs> finish this that you have to do these then you will find yes definitely and and i'll just want to add one more thing which is uh, why compare why not collaborate because uh, yeah, both definitely. tableau and power bi has the ability to to fetch the elements or all the features from r and python as well there is one yeah, question yeah. about this one as well so in tableau you can also work in a tableau environment with r and python you can also work mm. in a power bi environment along with r and python so yeah, yeah. why this compare, a, why not collaborate this is a great point uh, raised by mr kashi that uh, definitely uh, r also r has a great uh, compatibility and connectivity and you can take from uh, python and from power bi in r also so it's uh, it's a great thing yes and and the second half of the question was r is useful for machine learning and ai purpose as well yeah sure same like python definitely okay 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 uh, that's great so um, uh, that's that's an amazing thing so uh, uh, till now i will uh, definitely request other participants as well because there are quite a number of of q and a which we have held so i will uh, formally thank you uh, Uh, mr shahzad for having this uh, time and definitely for this one hour uh, session uh, there is a lot of preparation which is which is happening so uh, uh, thank you for your valuable time uh, for the uh, for the community and uh, i will also thank the participants as well who have spared their time from their busy schedule and they have joined in the live session so thank you participants as well for sparing time and uh, uh, being a part of this live session the recordings definitely will be uploaded on the youtube channel so uh, i have shared the link so i will share the link before the session as well uh, in in the chat so if anyone wants to just uh, it will be uploaded um, tomorrow uh, so if you want to see the recording so you can you can see the recordings uh, by going on to, on that upload uh, on the channel so thank you it's a, it was a great learning session so let's uh, meet again for uh, next session as well uh, one more important thing we will email the feedback uh, of this session to all the participants so please try to uh, fill that uh, form as well thank you thank you mr uh, shahzad and thank you all the participants thank you kashif thank you very much so just one one minute i'll i'll share the link of the um the uh, the youtube channel where we will have the recordings the name is the name of the channel is kaizen analytic llp so it is the name of youtube channel okay so thank you thank you all and bye from now